What's going on, people? Oh, one sec. Let me see. Does it have my video? All right. Cool. I think we got it. What's going on, people? This is Balaji, and welcome to another edition of The Demand Wars. All right. Now, let me introduce this handsome gentleman to my right. He's the creative mind behind the flow with shows like Level Up, The Marketing Mixtape, B2B Therapy, Attribution 2.0. He is the head of content for a startup named Hockey Stack. You've been seeing them everywhere. Even before Obed joined Hockey Stack, he was doing creative content with Todd Clouser. He's a founder of the Easy Content Framework. So lucky you, we got him in the building. Uh, so we got to move. <laughs> we got to move. We got to move. So hop off the boss, hop off the blog, hop off the Zoom, create a move, create some tools. We got to move. Hop on the pod, hop on the talk, hop on the tube. Please help me welcome the one, the only, Obed Han Duraney. What up, Obed? Dude, that was freaking amazing. I've never had anyone introduce me like that before. That's amazing. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm still kind of <laughs> tripping out over your announcement. That's dope. Um, yeah, dude, appreciate you having me. Super excited to, to be here. I really love the, the idea of the show, the concept behind the show. So I'm super excited to partake in it and see what we can come up with today. That's that's awesome. Really excited to have you here. We've been working on connecting with the bed for a minute, but he has been in high demand. And obviously you can see why, uh, Obed, when you and uh, the Hockey Stack team launched the flow a couple of months ago, you completely turned B2B SaaS land upside down. It's interesting as well because sometimes stuff happens serendipitously. Um, yeah. Todd has been working on Lavender Land. Our friends, uh, Anthony Canada and JK Sparks, they launched Audience Plus. Yeah. Do you think this is something that's been bubbling in the background for B2B for a while? Is this long overdue? Absolutely, yeah. And, and you know, you're kind of seeing it play out that way um, because I feel like this is a natural progression towards mm. like what B2B B2B marketing, B2B SaaS marketing is evolving into. I mean, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's only like what, two decades, three decades old, B2B marketing. Whereas mm. like, you know, especially B2B SaaS marketing, um, whereas marketing itself is hundreds of years old. So it's had right. time to like evolve and develop over time. And so That's I think point. what you're trying, what you're seeing right now is just <clears throat> the natural progression of, you know, B2B SaaS marketing, digital marketing as a whole. Um, so yeah, I think, I think you're going to see more of it and it's super cool that, you know, we have people like Todd at Lavender that are leading the way we have, you know, Anthony Canada and his software that are, you know, enabling people in terms of the functionality to be able to do it more more easy e easily so mm -hmm. i think that's really cool that's super cool i'm really interested obed in sort of sort of the the evolution of obed right um we saw your refine labs with todd working yeah. for chris walker a couple of years ago and yeah. that was a big thing i think chris sort of uh revolutionized B2B, digital B2B marketing. Yeah. Uh, but then we've seen a lot of really sharp people sort of graduate from Refine Labs and move yeah. in different directions. I wonder if you could just take a minute, a couple of minutes to maybe talk us through like the career moves that helped yeah. you land at Hockey Stack. Yeah, yeah. So I was at, I was at um, Refine Labs, you know, same time that Todd was there. Sam Keenly and all these other people were there. So yeah. it was a it was a good time. It was a good time period in terms of like Refine Labs' history and whatnot. And I think mm. just having that group of people able to like kind of feed off of each other and talk to each other and whatnot, learn from each other, mm. it was very good for all of us in terms of just like collectively leveling up together. And mm -hmm. you know, obviously with someone like Chris at the helm who's who's obviously super super smart um it was good in terms of like the the tra trajectory that we were taking with our line of thinking when it comes right. to 
demand gen, B2B SaaS and all of that stuff. And then, right. you know, from there I went to uh, client boost. Um, I was at client boost for a little bit for there. I was responsible for creating like uh, creating some sort of program or framework that everyone at the company could follow to sort of emulate the success that I had on LinkedIn. So mm-hmm. that was like my first um, attempt or uh, that was the first time I was tasked with creating sort of a framework type of deal. And so I had that's where I created like the first version of my LinkedIn framework. And, you know, we implemented it with two or three people and it did really, really well. Like mm. we got, you know, a ton of qualified pipeline, new MRR and all that stuff. So after I parted ways with the company, um, I had sort of um, revamped that playbook with like new things that I had learned by then, more concepts, and then I gave it away for free. That was uh, a big point, I guess you could say. Um, And you know, at that point, I had done a lot of experimenting with content. I had created, you know, marketing music. I had created the video game stuff already I had created skits and so I was kind of already finding like my groove I guess you could say like I was growing into my own you know what I mean so the experimenting phase was I had gone through that where I just kind of made everything and saw what stuck so I joined a um I joined a company after that Loxo um another another like three month little stint and you know that didn't that didn't go my way either so after this you know that was my 2022 where i was kind of just jumping around from place to place refine labs client boost lock so so after this i was a bit um i had a bit of a mindset shift where really before 2022 and the year before so i used to run an agency from 20 um 17 to 2021 Mm -hmm. and then so when i moved on from the agency that's when i began just applying to jobs you know i'm applying to hundreds and hundreds of jobs getting rejected not getting like an interview back not getting any of those things so Mm -hmm. you know after refine labs after client boost it was more of just applying to jobs hundreds and hundreds of jobs not really going anywhere so I don't know what happened, but after Loxo, I was kind of just like, dude, F this, you know, like I got like, I became really cocky for some reason. And I think <laughs> I needed that, right? Like, I think I needed that. Like I was so fed up with like getting rejected where I was kind of yeah. just like, dude, you know what? Like, I don't need you guys. Like you guys need me. Like, I know what I'm mm-hmm. capable of. I know all the mm-hmm. shit that I can do. I see what y'all are doing with like b2b marketing with your you know marketing strategies and content strategies and stuff i see all these like holes i see all these areas improvement i see all these things that i do differently and i was just kind of fed up with getting rejected so i was like like i'm tapping out i'm you know i live in pakistan so i went to dubai i was like i'm gonna go to dubai i was chilling in dubai um and i really didn't have any intentions on jumping back into work for like a company because I was so tired and burnt out. Um, as a side thing, I was making a music video for Lavender because Todd was there. So he, you know, got me in touch with Will Balance and stuff. I started working on a music video for them. Uh, Amir popped up <clears throat> um, in like February and he was like, hey, you know, I'm building this team. At first, I was such in a, like, screw everything mindset, I didn't even reply to him. Like, he (laughs) sent me a DM. I didn't reply because I was like, whatever, man. And then, like, he messaged me again. And I was like, okay, let me reply to him because what I was holding out for, the reason I was no longer applying, the reason I was no longer interested in working was in my mind, I was like, dude, I think I've put out enough content on LinkedIn in the past year that the right person is going to like find me. You know what I mean? Mm. And you usually don't want to take that mindset like, hey, someone's going to knock on my doors and give me a million dollars because I deserve it, right? Like Mm -hmm. 
that's not kind of that's not what that was but i was just like you know i think i've put enough work out there to where someone smart mm. is gonna be like yo no this guy like this is the dude that we should have like at the helm of this and so mm. i honestly just like kind of waited out for that and emir popped up at first i didn't reply he followed up again so i was like all right out of respect for this guy mm. because you know like i uh, like I like that. Like, I like that he's actually like giving a shit. So, like, out of mm. respect for this guy, let me take this call with him. Yeah. And so, yeah. as soon as we got on the call, I was like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna let you know. Like, I'm not really looking right now. Like, I'm just mm -hmm. hanging out." He's like, "Well, let me just show you the product first. He showed mm. me the product, and long story short, it blew my mind. And like mm. that kind of changed the conversation for me because I was legitimately just." very amazed by the product and then from there he was like um you know you can do marketing however you want and so i was like all right let me like let me check that right so i was like mm. all right well i want to do this and i want to build yeah. the team this way and he was like you got it and i was like all right well i also want to you know do conceptual work and creative work and i don't want to just write blog posts all day and i want to do this this and this and he was like all right you got it and he just mm. kept saying, you got it, you got it to everything. So I was like, all right, well, shit, man, let me uh, let me really like test this. And I was like, and yeah. I want to make a streaming platform. And he was like, go to hockeystack.com slash the flow. And I go to mm. it and it was like the flow as it is now, like in its infancy. It wasn't a streaming mm -hmm. platform yet. Like it was more than a blog, more than like a cat, you know, like a resource hub. But it wasn't fully a streaming platform yet. And then right. he was like, I'm already trying to build one out. Like, why do you think I came to you? And so I was like, holy shit, you know, like this kind wow. of this might be the thing that I was holding out for. So then that's why I joined Hockey Stack. But, you know, I the reason I kind of told all that story, I know this is not really like a career show, but I just felt like, you know, as a marketer, man, like sometimes you just got to like. I know it's hard. I did it. I always like looked for the next job. I threw myself into new a, a new job just to have a job. But you know, you're never really gonna like really flourish um, until you find like that right spot for you. So it's okay mm -hmm. to like look for that right spot or hold out for that right spot. Um, you know, if you can, if you can afford to, if you can, right. you know, get by and whatnot, all that stuff. So yeah, right. <clears throat> that's kind of you know. I mean, it's not as a, uh, it's not as like, as energetic and like as hyped up and as like kumbaya, <laughs> I guess. Um, but that's really that's the that's the pat that got me here. You know, just a bunch yeah. of, not you know, um, uh, a, a bit of a term turmoil last year, yeah. and then you know, yeah. just holding out and then landing at a good spot. That's really all that was. Man. I tell you what, Obed, I appreciate you sharing that story and and being transparent about the story. You know, a lot of times people essentially edit, <laughs> they edit their career journey and they take out some of the bits that are less glamorous. Yeah. You no, haven't sir. done that. And, and it's yeah. interesting because some people might feel that you are lucky if they focus on the wrong part of the story, the part on the store of the story that really grabbed my attention is how for months, maybe years prior to that point of you going to Dubai, you were putting content out. You were yeah. putting a stake in the ground as to, this is my unique point of view. This is my unique creative approach. You were trying, experimenting with stuff, probably some of it bombed, probably yeah. some of it was good, but got ignored. Yeah. Maybe some of it got a handful of likes from Todd and your mom and, you know, the th same three people. But you created sort of this um, this history, this body of work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost curious as to what even motivated you. At, at those times, you had a nine to five that perhaps had nothing to do with the or, or little to do with the content you were creating. Yeah. Why were you putting in time after hours to do all this creative stuff and potentially fail in such a public fashion? Um, I mean, it's a it's a pretty loaded question. I have a lot of answers for it. Um, mm. Happy to go down that route. But there's, you know, there's a lot involved. There's 
you know, one, I'm in Pakistan, right? I, mm-hmm. I came here to live live with my dad and whatnot. Um, mm. we'll come back soon, but I've been in Pakistan this whole time, so I oh, don't, okay. you know, I don't go out and you know go to the movies and stuff here. So I'm very much, it's like I hang out with my family, my wife, my kids. I spend a lot of time with them. I spend time playing video games. I spend time learning the things that I want to learn. Right now, I'm learning Unreal Engine Five. And just mm. like these are the things that I do, and then I work, right? So like, that's kind of what personal life has been for me in Pakistan. Mm. So there was, a, you know, I also make music on the side, and aside from like the marketing music, I make like mm. actual music on and off. So at one point, I realized I was like, man, like I run a marketing agency. Like, what's the mm. one thing that could benefit like an up and coming musician? I was like his own marketing agency right so like <laughs> i kind of put like the music career on pause to like learn a lot more about marketing and like mm. grow my knowledge and like my skill set there and so when it came to while running that content agency you know i saw linkedin in like 2019 i saw i added someone i saw them like someone else's post and i was like yo this kind of works like facebook back in the day to where like Mm -hmm. if your connection like someone's post it shows it to you so then i thought like okay if i add you know like the ceo of apple for the sake of the conversation and Mm -hmm. then he likes my post then it's going to show all of his connections that you know tim cook whoever liked a bad Durrani's post i was like holy crap so then i just opened up like um articles on like top 50 funded SaaS companies of 2020 and then I would like go to number one on the list and I'd go to that company on LinkedIn open their employee list like add the VP Mm co-founder you know director of marketing like all those people then I'd go to like number two on the list and so I built like my LinkedIn connections that way just adding Mm -hmm. like all these senior marketing people from the industry so I like the goal was get them in your audience, put out content, have them like it, they like it, then it shows all of their connections and you're kind of just like, you know, you're you're growing your name in the industry and whatnot. And so that was the whole reason I started putting out all that content. And mm-hmm. it, the, the last reason was was because I kept getting rejected from jobs. And mm. it hit me one day when, I don't know, after like the 900th rejection, I was just sitting there It was oh, it was after Glassdoor, and you know, you know how you said that I kind of don't omit anything. I guess that might be the one bad thing Ah. about interviewing me. Um, Ah. You have to be careful about what you ask me. If you ask me a question, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm gonna give you the real answer. So you have to be careful about what you ask me. So um, I was interviewing for Glassdoor. It was a content marketing manager role. I'm just coming Mm -hmm. off of running a content marketing agency for four years and I make it to like after the first interview and I get rejected and like I got this email saying like hey we enjoyed interviewing you but we've gone with someone else and like dude that was like the final straw for me like after being Mm -hmm. rejected like hundreds of times when I read that I was like bro who like show me show me (laughs) show me the person that you hired for yeah. a basic content marketing manager role like over yeah. me, yeah. you know? Like yeah. I was so upset and frustrated. And then it hit me, cause I was sitting there thinking like, man, like I can do this, I can design, I can write, I can make music, I can edit music, like I can do so much shit. And then it hit me, I was like, Abed, like you know you can do all that. Like no one else knows you can do all that. Like for them to know you can do all that stuff, like you're gonna have to show them. like you got to put this stuff out there. So then I was like, okay. And then that's really what was the beginning of me, like creating content. I had been using LinkedIn all this time, but Mm -hmm. I wasn't making skits and like music and like the video game stuff and putting on like this, like, you know, concepts and whatnot out there. So that was really the turning point for, you know, the, the job rejections, the music career, all that mm. stuff kind of just mm. bubbled into one thing and I just started making all that stuff. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. I love that. And the great thing about this is, listen, most of the folks that are listening right now are not going to have your combination of music skills, video gaming interests, the ability to write right. and flow. 
But if we peel back the onion and look at the process, look at the mindset, right? you bet on yourself, yeah. you combined your existing passions and interests and brought that into B2B, right. that's actually yeah. encouraging because we could do exactly what you did, but it could look completely different and yeah. be completely unique. Yeah, yeah. You know, and like, that's that that's the benefit of experimenting, right? And mm. like, maybe this is helpful too. like when I was experimenting, I was like, dude, fuck it. Sorry, excuse my French. I was like, dude, screw <laughs> it. Good. you know, like, even if I do put out like the most cringiest thing ever, like, whatever, this is the internet. None of these people really know me, I could just delete my profile, disappear forever, <laughs> whatever. Right. So like, that that's what kind of made me like comfortable in terms of like even if i have like the biggest mess up i put out like the cringiest skit ever like whatever yeah. it doesn't matter right so like that made me kind of comfortable with just uh... putting it out there and the thing is just experimenting and I, I forgot who i was telling this to but let's say like you like cooking like mm -hmm. why not what's stopping you from like cooking up a bomb meal and just like making one of those like youtube short style videos with you're like putting like you're cooking this meal you're putting it together and there's just like a voiceover of you talking about marketing shit like mm. just try it like why not mm. like just see how it goes put it out I love there that. I who love knows that. like people might like people might just come across that and be like yo this is dope like i need more content like this on linkedin like whatever you know the, the fact that b2b marketing is so young mm -hmm. like the good thing about it is like the experimentation experimentation potential is like limitless at this point. You could literally yeah. grab so many concepts from B2C and like YouTube and just adapt it to B2B and mm. just see how it goes. That's that's really what a lot of these huge brands, you know, like they're doing. Like sales feed does that really, really well. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Like they can turn any like mainstream concept, any B2C you know, concept into something uh, that would vibe well with a B2B sales audience. So mm -hmm. it's just a matter of experimenting and then like finding that groove, like finding those two or three things that work for you that you can consistently recreate and uh, evolve the concept of and just like sticking with those two, three things. Like the way that I stick with text posts, skits, gaming videos and songs right like i don't really need to deviate from that from in terms of my personal content right like what i create for hockey stack like that's different but in terms of like quote and quote personal brand or whatever like i don't really need to deviate from those three or four things but experimentation is is what's going to lead you there to like finding right. those three or four things that that are that are best for you yeah, very true. Very true. That's what's up. I love it. I love it. All right, Obed, with that being said, we are going to, with your permission, put you in the hot seat and we're going to get into yeah. the questions for Demand Wars. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. go. Let's go. All right. So the first scenario, the first question is desert island marketer. You're dropped yeah. on a desert island, no food, no water. You do have Wi-Fi, though, and a laptop. And How convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause we gotta yeah. keep you working. We gotta keep you working. Yeah. You got a thousand dollars a month budget, and we need you to take the hockey create demand for hockey stack essentially. How okay. are you going to do that on one K a month? <laughs> okay. So I'm on a desert island, no food, no water. <laughs> yep. Uh but I have Wi Fi and a thousand dollar budget. <laughs> That that sounds like that sounds like Amir. That's uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Love you, Amir. If you're listening to this, Amir would never do that. Um, He'd yeah, give you no, water. Dude. He'd give you water. Yeah. He'd at least give me water. There um, we go. So okay. So I mean, I don't have water. So I'm gonna be dead in what? <laughs> thirty. Like, how long can you survive without water? What I don't is know. It? Maybe like, like thirty days or something. Let me I see. think I think it's three days for water and like thirty for food, something oh, like that. Oh shit! Oh, it's damn. not very so long got, for water. Dang! So I got three days. All right, <laughs> three days to create demand, or I'm I'm kaput. Okay, so hmm, uh, I got a thousand dollars a month, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
so naturally the first thing i do i think this is like this is the obvious thing is mm. i have a laptop i have wi-fi so i'm going to document my like like me being trapped on this island and be like you know youtube shorts like hey guys day two i'm still on this freaking island trying to create demand for this damn company y'all go buy this attribution software dog and so like and you see me like i'm dressed in like leaves and shit that i've like plucked from the trees but it's like i'm in like this horrible situation but i'm like yeah man i need y'all to buy this software like i think that would be sick like maybe it would put hockey stack in like some type of humanitarian crisis but <laughs> i think i think we'd overcome that but um one for sure i would document me just staying there you know like all right mm. i'm trying to chop down this tree and i'm making like a like a hammock or whatever <clears throat> or i'm trying to start a fire um you know, on my phone, I actually have downloaded this app years ago that mm. I've never used, but it's an on it's an offline survival manual. So no if way. I have my phone, yeah, I got like this full blown survival manual. I don't know why I'll ever need it, but um I Just got the case. survival yeah, I got the survival manual. Um so you know, I'd learn how to start a fire from there. But all mm. of these things that I'm doing to like survive. I would just be filming it and turning them into TikToks and YouTube shorts and, you know, documenting my stay on this island. Other than I think that would get me the attention and the awareness mm -hmm. like, holy shit, this dude's really trapped on this island right now, mm -hmm. you know, um, and like the world could watch and stuff. And then I could just build up the suspense and then just plug hockey stack and like it would be this massive hockey stack plug while like the world is watching like will a bat survive on this island <laughs> who's gonna <laughs> save him and so like it becomes like this entire like world crisis scenario oh where everyone's just like paying attention to me and i'm like yeah hockey stack and then so like that's gonna be that's gonna be how i would create demand in that situation all right so i have to apologize to uh to the viewers because uh, Obed has given warnings before. If you if you go to Hockey Stack, uh, the flow on Hockey Stack and enjoy several of the series on there, you get to know Obed a little bit, uh, a little bit more. And he shared that he loves to daydream. So me asking him these open-ended scenarios uh, could take us just about anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's very true. That's a very good thing to point out. I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. Who knows like where we're going to end up? But I love it. But I love it. Okay, so that was a really creative interpretation of that problem. You essentially need to find ways to get attention first. That's like the hardest problem, isn't it? Right. Getting right. the attention of your target audience. Yeah. And it seems like there's ways to do that without necessarily spending a ton of money, but it takes Absolutely. creativity. Yeah, totally. Totally. You know, like first they have to know you exist. Then once, you know, like, once they know you exist, here's where I think people really mess up, you know, real quick. Mm -hmm. When we talk about this, like we only talk about really brand awareness and brand mm -hmm. affinity, but mm -hmm. there's a massive gap between someone knowing your brand exists, brand awareness and brand affinity, someone True. admiring your brand. There's a True. huge gap there, right? Yeah. And I think one of the most important missing gaps is association brand association first they know mm. you then they associate you with a specific outcome mm. or a specific scenario right mm -hmm. and then you know like when the time comes they take action right all that stuff but in between awareness and affinity or as i like to say admiration is mm -hmm. association like they have to also mm. associate you with something so mm. first they have to like be aware of you and then they have to associate you with a specific outcome right and so i think i think that's um equally important than mm. than just them knowing you yeah i love they that could know i love you. that yeah they could know you but then they move into market for a solution like yours and if they're not associating you with that solution they're not going to come to you that's so right. knowing you means absolutely nothing now in this scenario no, this is really great. You talk quite a bit uh, in the easy uh, easy mode framework uh, yeah. about con all content having a purpose. Yeah. 
Right. And yeah. what, the way you've defined this idea of brand association, it get, it could make us marketers think, okay, I do need content that makes them aware of the brand. Yeah. I do need content on the other end that allows them to feel affinity for my brand. But where's the content where I'm telling them this problem, this outcome equals my product. We need to be putting yeah. out pieces of yeah. content that make that yeah. connection. Yeah. Yeah. And to take that one step further, creative concepts really help with that. Mm. When you creative concepts is kind of what is the bridge between talking about your product and associating it with a specific outcome without explicitly talking about the product itself. Mm -hmm. You know Love what that. I mean? Love that. Love that. That's yeah. good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay, Obet. So you did pretty well when we took away pretty much all your resources. I'm a little <laughs> concerned about negative mentions for Amir not giving you water on the island. But that aside, <laughs> I think you, you and Hockey Stack came out pretty good on that one. Why don't we nice. flip the script now? So in this yeah. scenario, for the next question, Obed, you've got a blank check. The challenge is you're limited by time. So if Amir says, mm. we've got three days, we need you to create demand in three days. Whatever you need, you mm. got it. You just don't have time. How are you tackling that one? How do you think about that problem? So I have essentially unlimited money. Yes. But I only have three days. Yes. Huh. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Who owns the moon? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> can we can we get can we when, can when they say moonshot or bet, I don't think they literally <laughs> But like if we if we put like a massive hockey oh stack gosh. logo on the moon, right? Like we have unlimited money. So there's just like this constant hockey stack oh, logo Lord. on the moon if that would be possible that's one it's okay that's scenario a okay um, like what's his name elon lost launched a tesla into space right we could launch mm. something else into space um that would you be could. easy easy right <laughs> simple um <laughs> i would find every every like b2b event happening in the u.s and then I would, at every single airport where people are landing for the event, I just mm. fill it with hockey stack banners. Every mm. Uber going to and from mm. the airport to the conference, I would run ads in those Ubers. What else? I like that. Um, I like that. I would fly a plane around every conference that just like spells hockey stack in the sky and then goes away. There'd be that. Um, I'd sponsor every school in the country and send, I'd order a hundred boxes of pizza to be sent to every school in the <laughs> country. And it would say like a gift from hockey stack. Like there'd be a card that says a gift from hockey stack. I don't know why, how like every school knowing about us helps, but I feel like <laughs> if you could just easily get like, I don't know, like 200 million people to just like, learn about you in a day like why not um that would at least make for like a crazy viral campaign like software company hockey stack sends pizza to every school in america and it's just like like b2b SaaS people are going to see that why not it's going to be on the news so i would say just doing like acceptably wild shit as much mm -hmm. as you can in like three days to make like as big of a ruckus as you can and just draw like global like nationwide attention to yourself in like, I don't want to say like a positive uplifting manner, mm. but not also like a negative manner, but like almost like this wild scenario. Like I can't right. believe they did that, but it's like right. totally acceptable. I don't want to get us in trouble. Right. So like something like that. So I would just go around the country, just like stirring up as much stuff like that as possible in three days with the unlimited budget that I have, I would hire all of my friends. So I'd, be, I'd hit you up like, yo, Balaji, I give you a million dollars, dude. Like, like just go around and like, just do wild shit. I'd hit up Todd. I hit up like Drew, Travis Tyler from Panda Dog. Like hit up everyone. I have unlimited money. So I just give yeah. everyone a million to like <laughs> go. go out and like spread the word about Hockey Stack. 
now that we're opening up, dude, Post Malone, Jay Z, mm. like every like we have all the money in the world. Like how much does it cost for Post Malone to, you know, like perform somewhere? So like let's say that he costs like three hundred K to perform somewhere, we're like, screw it, like triple it, have him fly out right now, and then we just throw like a crazy like post Malone hockey stack concert. I don't know. And just every musician you know every celebrity endorsement that we could get in three days like the world would just be you know hockey stacks playground for three days if you gave me i thought i thought the moonshot was crazy (laughs) but that we forgot yeah we forgot about that so we even got the moon covered we got planet earth (laughs) and we got you know our near vicinity in space covered so i think Uh... we're good for three days I think we're good. I think we're pretty good. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. You know, um, Obed, uh, you've really almost become the exemplar, uh, along with Lavender and Audience Plus, for B two B companies marketing like a media company. You know, this hmm. this concept started to bubble up maybe over the past year. We just didn't have a lot of examples. There was uh, Paddle. Yeah. I think Paddle is one right. of the few examples. Ironically enough, Salesforce has yeah. something called Salesforce Plus, although it's not really that well publicized, but it does exist. Right. If companies are thinking about marketing like a media company right now, and by the way, I read your blog post where you gave excruciating detail, I think it was 18 <laughs> yeah. steps for yeah. how to uh, become or how to market like a media company. Could you maybe give some of the broad strokes for if someone says, okay, I'm a believer, I like it, but I'm at step step zero. Yeah. What are the three or four things I need to be thinking of? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say the, the bigger, the, the hard part is really just nailing the strategy behind it and more mm. so the mental gymnastics that goes into nailing the strategy, right? Like that's Mm. just kind of the hard part. Um, Cause it's kind of like, okay, like people have to like, they have to know about us, but then they also have to know what we do, but then they also know how, have to know how our product works, but then Mm. they also have to know about our narrative. So they know why they need that product in the first place. So like you can just go down this list of like all these if, ands and buts, right? And then, the hard part is then doing the mental gymnastics of working all that out right Mm -hmm. so like how do i account for all of this in two or three ways let me come Mm -hmm. up with one method that accounts for all of this right so like that is the hard part which todd and i have done with the easy mode framework it's all there so i think essentially it's nailing the strategy and what i would say if you're at step zero to get started with that, the first thing that you should do is um, establish like one, like your objectives, like what are you hoping to accomplish? Like what are the goals here, right? Yeah. And that's like your overall like business objectives, your company objectives and whatnot. And then we have like, like purposes for our content, right? Like Mm -hmm. if I want to, you know, drive pipeline, that's an objective. That's a business objective, right? I want to just drive more qualified pipeline. That's yeah. cool. But that can't be the purpose of my company. I mean, my content of all my mm. different content series, because of accomplishing that objective is a byproduct of doing a bunch of other things correctly. Mm. Right? So like now the, con- the, the, the content series that I create don't need to be geared towards accomplishing that objective. They need to be geared towards accomplishing those individual purposes. Yes. That once I accomplish those things, then as a byproduct, I will be driving more qualified pipeline. So Mm -hmm. like, that's not actually the goal. It's a byproduct of accomplishing your goals. So I would say first establish that, establish your objectives, establish your, your, purposes behind the content that you're going to be creating and then you want to like assess all of your existing like efforts like everything you've done up to this day your current 
content engine, whatever it, it consists of. Like, for example, you could say, okay, we do this newsletter. We have two podcasts. One is a leadership podcast. One is a more like geared towards end users. We also do blogging and we do webinars, right? Like whatever it is you're doing, open yeah. up a spreadsheet and like list out all of your activities. And then like you want to see sort of like assess like how much of this how much of these activities, how much of these efforts are already fulfilling those purposes? Sorry, my camera died. Oh, um, no worries. How, how many of these, uh, how much of what we're doing is already accomplishing those purposes? It's already mm. moving us towards those goals. And right. oftentimes we see that not much of it, hmm. you know, like not much of it is um, because a lot of times our activities are siloed, like we're blogging and we're driving traffic, but like that's its own little world. It's not really related to how we're podcasting, where we're kind right. of just interviewing CEOs and whatnot. And then that's right. not really related to how we're attacking YouTube, where we're kind of just doing videos on different YouTube keywords and whatnot. So like we're mm. doing all of these things, but they're siloed. Right. So when you assess your activities to see if they're accomplishing these goals or fulfilling these purposes, oftentimes you'll find that they're not. So hmm. then that is like a great starting point for you to readjust all of what you're currently doing without having to make like new stuff. You can hmm. simply adjust what you're currently doing and have them come from the lens of fulfilling those new purposes you've established and like go from there. And then mm. you start to like blend new stuff into the mix as mm. you go and, you know, you grow this catalog over time. Yeah. yeah. Man, that, that's really smart. I know you've talked about the importance of establishing your narrative, communicating your narrative, um, uh, reaching the end users who are going to be advocates and champions, uh, and then even doing the, the middle out stuff showing people the how, how to yeah, get them exactly. to the vision yeah. that you've painted in that narrative. So it covers all the bases, but I think it is really revealing that from your experience, a lot of the existing content, because of our siloed approach, might not do any of those things particularly yeah. well. And yet there's hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet there's yeah. hope. You, you can actually yeah. use them as a foundation, it sounds like. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. You know, you don't have to you don't have to, you know, start from scratch, dump everything, just assess your current efforts and then tweak them to, you know, uh, come from the lens of these new goals you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Hey, we're coming up on time, so I got a couple more questions for you in the hot Let's seat of bed. Um the first one, we call this section one got to go. So hmm. I'm going to give you a group of three marketing things. Hmm. You get to keep two of them, but okay. one got to go. All okay. right. You ready? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do let's it. Go. All right. So here's three things. You get to keep two of them. Marketing okay. ops expertise. Okay. Performance marketing expertise. Okay. Customer insight expertise. One got to go. So marketing ops, performance marketing customer insight you could be good at two of them but we're not okay, going to give so you all three. is this okay so is this me personally as a marketer having these three skills or like these things disappearing from the world entirely like like if i choose marketing ops like marketing ops just does not exist in the world like we don't know it's like been erased from our memories like is right that right the question let's say it would be something in between let's say for your organization um, and oh, okay. this isn't a forever okay. thing. It's not a forever, yeah. but it's for a yeah. right now. Like, mm -hmm. because marketers always have limited resources and companies don't always have, they can't always get everything they want. Yeah. So which of these would you absolutely need to keep right now? And which one could yeah. you maybe defer till later? Well, I think, yeah, I think it's a lot easier to go down the list of must-haves and prioritize mm -hmm. them then mm -hmm. it is easier to just drop one so drop like, customer insights like that like we need that like that can't go anywhere that feeds so much that you know feeds like product roadmap product vision you know um content feedback that feeds a lot of things it's mm. very that, that's very crucial so we couldn't mm -hmm. really get rid of that um 
performance marketing and marketing ops. Now, under marketing mm-hmm. ops, are we also counting like reporting and analytics <laughs> and all of that? Um, yeah, that that would fit under marketing ops. <laughs> okay, so that might be challenging for you working at OffiStack. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's fine. We can we can drop performance marketing. I don't need it. I can make it work. I can make it work without performance marketing. It's all good. Uh, um, if anyone can, you you'd be the one. Yeah. I'd bet on. <laughs> yeah, you'd be the appreciate one. <laughs> that. Thank you. Yeah, so I would keep customer insights and I would keep marketing ops. Love um, it. Performance marketing can be wiped from our memories. It's all good. I survive. <laughs> RIP Google and Facebook. All right, got yeah. it. Okay, here's three new ones. Trade show leads, ebook leads, webinar uh, leads. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, One got to go. Probably, uh, yeah, definitely trade show leads. There's mm. so many different reasons that you could be coerced into. Like, you could, like, they could have a stellar batch of brownies and, like, <laughs> To get the brownies, you got to go through the demo, get your batch scanned. And like, dude, right. I, I just want that pen. I just want that brownie. I just yeah. want that Yeti mug. If yeah. you're Tim Davidson, right? <laughs> so like the trade show booth leads for sure. They got to go. Mm. Um, gated eBooks, you could even make it work. You could just create like a very, very, very good targeted eBook, you know, and th- that could still kind of work. You could also, mm-hmm. a webinar could also be very, very targeted. You could... Like I could do a webinar where I like break down the five, the, the eight parts of my framework and discuss the co- consultancy, and like you know, um, maybe there, there's there's people in there that would be interested in it. Like if you're if you're if you're in, into that framework, if you're into the parts of it, so that could still work. Uh, webinar mm. leads they still work for a lot of people, a lot of companies mm. like Cognizant and whatnot. But mm. trade show boots, I think it's too easily like. Just I don't know manipulated in terms too of too like, easy to game the system. The intent's not really there. Yeah, yeah. And there's no there's no like intent that you could yeah. actually like count on at any level. You know, mm. so it's mm. all kind of like it's all. I would just take every single one of those with seven tons of yeah. grains of seven <laughs> seven seventy thousand grains of salt. Um, yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, this should be a good one. Lead scoring, Obed lead nurturing or intent data one gotta go let's drop lead scoring and lead nurturing both mm. and let's just keep the intent data mm. um, dump two of them yeah yeah i think i don't i don't think you need i don't know maybe i don't know maybe need lead nurturing is helpful at like very you know large enterprise companies i don't know never worked mm-hmm. at an enterprise company but I don't I don't see I can I don't think you need either of those. I think mm. you can build a way more effective content engine without putting any of the like uh like actual resources or like mental energy behind those things or any kind yeah. of like manual work hours and stuff like that. So right. you can do without those things. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. I buy that. I buy that. Last one. Great brand reach. Great brand recall or great brand resonance reach oh, recall damn. resonance one gotta that's go that's hard <laughs> that's hard okay that's hard maybe resonance Ooh. because Ooh. you could still get by if they if you can reach them and then they recall mm-hmm. you in the buying situation mm-hmm. if it's not hitting and you're not making them go like man I, oh I love that like it's okay like mm. that that won't it'll be a it the road towards them admiring your brand will be longer but mm-hmm. it's not going to impact things like pipeline and sales as as significantly as if we dropped reach mm. or i think the worst of those to drop would be recall because then mm. none of it matters like it doesn't matter if it doesn't matter if you're reaching them or if you're resonating with them if they're not yeah. calling you when the time is right. So when like, the time is right. Y- yeah. Interesting. Like, re- yeah. So I think you could do without. Uh, it's hard. I think it's very hard. I think that was the <laughs> hardest one. But if you had to drop one, I think it would yeah. be resonance. You could still do with reach and recall. Yeah. Um, but you couldn't. You couldn't at all do without recall, and it would just make things infinitely harder without reach. 
because mm. then I don't know you'd be reaching like two people at a time and right, so right. that that doesn't right. help anyone all right all right that was pretty good that was pretty good this is a really great obed uh we're gonna Thanks, close man. out with reality roulette so we're asking you to remix a favorite reality show of yours it could be a reality competition or even a sitcom mm. if you don't watch reality shows but remix yeah. a show and put b2b marketers in it what would you go okay. with okay let me see okay um I don't really watch reality shows, but I feel like there's mm. one in my head that mm. there is a reality show. Oh, uh, the Ultimate Fighter by the UFC. Oh, like we just we just do that <laughs> instead of <laughs> sounds violent. Instead, instead of like <laughs> UFC fighters, it just be like us marketers uh... beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> Um, I think that'd be hilarious. Like if you just had the ultimate fighter, but with B2B marketers. Oh my um, gosh. It'd be cool. I know Drew's down to throw some hands. So like, let's see, <laughs> let's see, let's see how it goes. Marketing fight club. I think Elon was trying to uh, have like a slap fest with uh, Zuckerberg. A month oh ago. yeah. They were trying to do an MMA fight or something. That's funny. crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy yeah, stuff. I think, but... I think Zuck would win for, for sure. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. On that yeah, note, he's been training folks, and stuff. He has, he has. This has been a lot of fun, man. This is really insightful. Actually, got to know a lot more about you, Abed, and Thanks, man. yeah, I had a some, lot of some, fun. Some pretty creative, creative ideas. I see how the experimentation works. Hey, folks, um, they're not all going to be winners, okay? The the logo on the moon might not pan out, but yeah. I would show up for yeah. the Post Malone concert. I'll just say that right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. That's noted. I'm going to write that uh, down. There you go. Appreciate there you it. go. Thanks, Balaji. Hey, it was awesome yeah. talking to you. This was great. Thank you, Abed, for coming on. Uh, we've been talking to Abed uh, Duraney, the head of content at Hockey Stack. Thank you for coming on to the Demand Wars. Folks, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.